Hello dear students this is Vishal sir from Ikra High School today we'll be concluding chapter 9 from standard 9th NCERT syllabus our today's topic will be inertia and mass let's continue reading our chapter first all the examples and activities given so far illustrate that there is a resistance offered by an object to change its state of motion if it is at rest it tends to remain at rest if it is moving it tends to keep moving this property of an object is called inertia do all bodies have the same inertia we know that it is easier to push an empty box than a box full of books similarly if we kick a football it flies away but if we kick a stone of the same size with equal force it hardly moves we may in fact get an injury in our foot while doing so similarly in activity 9.2 Instead of a 5 rupee coin if we use 1 rupee coin we find that a lesser force is required to perform the activity a force that is just enough to cause a small car to pick up a large velocity will produce a negligible change in the motion of a train this is because in comparison to the car the train has much lesser tendency to change its state of motion accordingly we say that the train has more inertia than the car clearly heavier or massive objects offer larger inertia quantitatively the inertia of an object is measured by its mass we may thus relate inertia and mass as follows inertia is a natural tendency of an object to resist a change in its state of motion or of rest the mass of an object is a measure of its inertia so dear students today we are going to study about inertia with relation to mass inertia is a state of an object to remain at rest if it is at rest and to remain in motion if it is motion unless and until any external force is applied on it for example if you observe the things around us the one in the rest remains at rest unless and until somebody moves it a car remains at rest till and unless someone drives it even a rolling ball keeps on rolling unless and until some force is applied on it according to newton's first law states that the object at motion remains in motion and the object at rest remains in rest unless and until an unbalanced external force is applied on it it was also known as the law of inertia that means the tendency of an object to resist the change in its state of motion now today we are concerning the inertia with the mass of a body larger the mass of the body larger its inertia if you want to move a bicycle to one side you can easily pick it up or move it with single handedly while if a bus a truck or a car breaks down in between of the road there need some two or three persons to move it around because the mass of the car is larger than the mass of the bicycle so the inertia of the car is larger than the inertia of the bicycle it is hardly possible to move a bus or a car single handedly just like in the case of a bicycle so mass is the amount of matter present in it more mass of an object has more inertia the bigger objects are harder to start and stop so the second law of motion is based on mass and inertia of an object as the first law of motion indicated that when an unbalanced external force acts on the object its velocity changes that is the object gets an acceleration we would now like to study how the acceleration of an object depends on the force applied to it and how we measure a force let us recount some observation from our everyday life during a game of ten table tennis if the ball hits the player it does not hurt him on the other hand when a fast moving cricket ball hits a spectator it may hurt him a truck at rest does not require any attention when parked along road side but a moving truck even at a speed as low as 5 meter per second may kill a person standing in its path that means a small mass such as a bullet may kill a person when fired from a gun these observations suggest that the impact produced by the object depends on their mass and velocity similarly if an object is to be accelerated we know that the greater force is required to give greater velocity in other words there appears to exist some quantity of importance that combines the object mass and its velocity one such property is called momentum which was introduced by newton the momentum p of an object is defined as product of mass m and the velocity v that is p is equal to mv momentum has both direction and magnitude 
इट्स डायरेक्शन इज सेम एज दैट ऑफ वेलोसिटी एस ए यूनिट ऑफ मोमेंटम इज किलोग्राम मीटर पर सेकेंड सीज द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ अनबैलेंस फोर्स ब्रिंग्स द चेंज इन द वेलोसिटी ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट इट इज देर फॉर क्लियर दैट फोर्स ऑल्सो प्रोड्यूस अ चेंज इन मोमेंटम Let us consider a situation in which a car with a dead battery is to be pushed along a straight road to give it a speed of one meter per second, which is sufficient to start its engine. If one or two person give a sudden push to it, it hardly starts. But a continuous push over some time result in a gradual acceleration of the car to the speed. It means that the change of momentum of the car is not determined by the magnitude of the force, but also by the time during which the force is exerted. It may then also be concluded that force is necessary to change the momentum of the object depend on the time rate at which momentum is changed. The second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied unbalanced force in the direction of the force. Now let's talk about the velocity. What about if the velocity of that object is increased? For example, a bullet of a gun when thrown with a hand, it hardly hits the object precisely and it hardly does any damage. But if the same bullet is fired from the gun, its velocity is increased though it has the same mass, but due to the change in the velocity, its effect because of the force has increased. So there comes a new term called momentum. If a body is at rest, its velocity is zero, so its momentum is also zero. The SI unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second or kilogram meter second or kilogram ms minus one. The example given over here, a truck moving at a very low speed can kill a person standing in its path because of the heavy mass of the truck. A bullet of small mass when fired from the gun can kill a person because of large velocity of the bullet. So the impact of the body depends upon its mass and its velocity. Now let's calculate the second law of motion in mathematical formula. Let's take an object of mass m, which is moving along a straight line with an, in, with an initial velocity u. It is uniformly accelerated to velocity v in time t by the application of a constant force f. The initial and final momentum of the object will be p that is called momentum that is the initial velocity is equal to mu mass into initial velocity and p2 is equal to mv that is the final momentum with mass m the mass remains same but the velocity has changed respectively. So change in momentum varies to P2 minus P1 that is final momentum minus initial momentum. Final momentum is MV minus initial momentum is MU where you will get M as common and you will be left with V minus U. Now let's rate the change of momentum with respect to time. So that varies to M into V minus U upon T. When the force is applied on it, the force is the rate of the change of momentum that varies to m into v minus u upon t. It becomes equal to when you write some constant k. k is constant of proportionality. So here m into v minus u upon t. v minus u upon t is the change in velocity with respect to time that means acceleration. So k mass m into acceleration where k is constant. Here a is equal to v minus u upon t is the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. The quantity k is constant of proportionality. SI unit of mass and acceleration are kilogram and meter per second respectively. Unit of force is so chosen that the value of the constant k becomes 1. For this, one unit of force is defined as the amount that produce an acceleration of 1 meter per second in an object of 1 kilogram mass. That is, one unit force is equal to k into 1 kg into 1 meter per second. So that's where the value of the k becomes 1 and you will be left with f is equal to ma. So this is the derived formula for the second law of motion. The unit of force is kilogram meter per second or Newton which has a symbol n. The second law of motion gives us a method to measure the force acting on an object as a product of its mass and acceleration. The second law of motion is often seen in action in our day to day life. Have you ever noticed that while catching a fast moving cricket ball, a fielder in the ground gradually pulls his hands backward with the moving ball. In doing so, the fielder increases the time during which the high velocity of the moving ball decreases to zero. So that way, uh, while playing cricket, the fielder catches the ball easily. He moves his hands backward so that he gets enough amount of time 
to make the momentum zero. The acceleration of the ball is decreased and therefore the impact of catching the fast moving ball is also reduced. If the ball is stopped suddenly, then its high velocity decreases to zero in a very short interval of time. Thus, the rate of change of momentum with the ball will be large. So, if you directly without pulling your hands back, if you catch the ball, it may hurt you with a very hard effect because the velocity directly becomes to zero within a very short period of time. So, if you take a little more time to stop the ball, that would decrease the effect of its velocity. A large force would have to be applied in holding the catch that may hurt the palm of the fielder. Also in a high jump, the athlete event, the athlete are made to fall either on the cushion bed or on a sand bed. This is to increase the time of the athlete's fall to stop after making the jump. This decreases the rate of momentum and hence the, the force. The first law of motion can be mathematically stated from the second expression of the second law of motion. So, this is the mathematical expression of second law of motion where if you want to express it in the first law of motion, it may be something like this f is equal to mv minus u upon t where t is substituted on the left hand side. So, force into the time becomes the change in the momentum. So, where f is equal to 0, v is equal to u for whatever time t is taken. This means that object will continue moving with uniform velocity u throughout the time t. If u is 0, that means the initial velocity is 0. It also means that the object is at rest. Then v will also be 0. There won't be any final velocity. That is the object will remain at rest. Now let's study Newton's third law. For every action that is equal and opposite reaction. Let's think about some examples. What happens if you are standing on a skateboard or a slippery floor and push against the wall? You slide in the opposite direction away from the wall. Because you push the wall but the wall pushed back on you with the equal and opposite force. Also, when it, why does it hurt so much when you stub your toe? When the toe exerts a force on a rock, the rock exerts an equal force back on your toe. The harder you hit your toe against it, the more force the rock exerts back on your toe and more your toe hurts. So that brings to us a new term impulse. The impulse exerted on an object depends on the force acting on the object which is directly proportional to the force. The time that a force acts is directly proportional to its time. Third law of motion. The first two law of motion tell us how an applied force changes the motion and provide us with a method of determining the force. The third law of motion states that when one object exerts a force on another object, the second object instantaneously exerts a force back to the first. The first two forces are always equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. These forces act on different objects and never on the same object. In the game of football, sometimes we look at looking at the football and trying to kick it with a greater force collide with the player of the opposite team. Both feels hurt because of each applies a force to the other. In other words, there is a pair of forces and not just one force. Two opposing forces are known as action and reaction forces. So, according to the given explanation, Newton stated one law. That means, to every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. It is also to be remembered that the action and reaction always acts on two different objects simultaneously, not on the same object. So, let's take some more example to understand it better. You are standing at rest and intend to start walking on the road. So, while you start walking on the road, then you apply a force to the road below backward. The road exerts an equal and opposite force on your feet to make you move forward. So, even though the action and reaction force are always equal in magnitude, these forces may not produce acceleration of equal magnitudes. This is because each force acts on different objects that may have different mass. Let's take for an example of the firing of the gun. When the gun fires a bullet, the bullet moves forward but the gun strikes back. The bullet exerts an equal and opposite force on the gun. This result in the recoil of the gun. Since the gun has much greater mass than the bullet, the acceleration of the gun is much less than the acceleration of the bullet. That brings to our new topic, conservation of momentum. Let's take for example two balls E and B of mass MA that is the mass of the first ball A and MB the mass of the second ball B which are traveling in the same direction along a straight line at different velocities. Both are having different velocities. 
and there are no other external unbalanced force acting on them that means there is no frictional force no any other forces acting on them and they are moving in a frictionless manner in one same direction now let's suppose that if the velocity of first object or a first ball is greater than the velocity of second object that is second ball the two balls will collide with each other as shown in figure given below and during the collision which lasts for a time t that is at some moment it may collide with each other just like here in the part b a will apply its force to b and b will apply its force to a when the force is applied from a to b it is called f a b while the b applies the force on the a and it becomes force b a the ball a exerts a force a b on ball b and the b exerts a force on force b a on the ball a now after collision there may be the change in the velocity that velocity is considered as v a and v b these are the velocities of the two ball a a b after collision the momenta of the ball a before and after the collision are m a u a that is the initial momentum before collision and m a v a that is the momentum after collision rate of change of its momentum that is f a b during collision will be m a v a minus u a upon that means the final velocity minus initial velocity upon t into mass remains the same for a similarly the rate of change of momentum for ball b is equal to f b a during the collision with m b v b minus u b upon t so this is the change in momentum for first ball a and this is the change in momentum for ball b now according to the third law third law states that there is an equal and opposite force or the action and reaction are equal and opposite according to the third law of motion the force ab exerted on ball a on b and the force b a exerted on ball b on ball a must be equal and opposite to each other therefore force f a b is equal to minus force f b a that means the change in velocity uh, change in momentum becomes like this m a v a minus u a upon t is equal to minus m b v b minus u b upon t here as the time is same for both it is not necessary to consider it thus you get a equation m a u a plus m b u b m a u a this u a is calculated with the momentum of m b u b is equal to m a v a plus m b v b since m a u a plus m b u b is the total momentum of the ball a b before the collision and m a v a plus m b u b is their total momentum after the collision we observe that the total momentum of the two ball remain unchanged or conserved provided no other external force acts as a result of this ideal collision experiment we say that the sum of the momenta of two objects before collision is equal to the sum of momenta after the collision provided there is no external unbalanced force acting on them and this is known as the law of conservation of momentum which can be stated as total momentum of two object is unchanged or observed by or conserved by the collision thank you children